Well, looks like I was right. 250 plus hours before I reached Stormblood. I'm afraid it's going to be a little while before I get to that, though. But anyways. After the roller coaster plot twisty insanity that was the ending to A Realm Reborn, I couldn't stop myself from gliding straight into Heaven's Ward. Not just because of the fact that every single person under the sun was telling me that Heaven's Ward was absolutely incredible, but because I myself wanted to know. What exactly was it that made people love Heaven's Ward? Was it the story, the characters, the content, the locations, the music? What made Heaven's Ward the critically acclaimed expansion? As it turns out, it was pretty much all the above. Now I do have some grievances with Heaven's Ward, don't get me wrong, and we will be going over them. But where to begin? I mean, I like the order we went with when reviewing Rumble Born, so let's just do that again. Now, not to say I was getting bored of Black Mage. Far from it. Now I had access to Ley Lines, but I still moved for mechanics though. Fire 4 and Blizzard 4, and it was wonderful. But something about only playing Black Mage was getting to me. No, not just the enormous DPS queue times. Okay, two things were getting to me. The other one was that I didn't feel like I was getting the true FF14 experience. So I figured it was high time to try a different class. And what did I pick? Well... I gave in. I finally specked into Dark Knight, ladies and gentlemen. Let's be fair though, it was kind of inevitable. I even called it during my ARR review. So did it live up to my expectations? Yes, sort of, in a weird way. Firstly, I need to say that the Dark Knight questline is undoubtedly one of the most unexpectedly Kino storylines ever, and I feel like everyone, at the absolute least, needs to do the initial set of quests from level 30 to 50, even if you never touch Dark Knight again after that. Just an incredibly cool story in general with a really awesome twist at the end. It's just so fucking good. Please go play it, I'm begging you. Go find our end in the Pillars of Ishgard, accept it, and do it. And even after level 50 quest, it just keeps its momentum going. Sidurju is a great character, and I loved all the quests up to level 60 with him. The final mission combat in the Kurthus Western Highlands, where they just send these enormous waves of enemies after you again and again, was just incredible. Okay, but how does the actual class fare? Honestly, I really like it. You get a big fuck off great sword because who needs shields when you have the blackest knight? Eh, I don't. Edgy shadow effects on your abilities, stupid fast Q times for everything, and uh, did I mention the BF sword? Going from DPS to tank was quite the change as well. It was weird feeling like I was actually doing something important, and it made me truly realize how worthless and disposable I was as a DPS player. I honestly like the pace of the Dark Knight more now, trying to hold aggro while managing my damage mitigation so I don't blow my load in 5 seconds and then have nothing to protect myself with when the boss is still at 95%. The general damage rotation of the class is really simple. Hard Slash, Siphon Strike, Soul Eater. And then you repeat. But you throw in other abilities here and there, so I kind of like the chilled nature of the Dark Knight compared to the minute to win it rush of the Black Mage trying to see how many Fire 4s I can cast in 15 seconds. But I'm not like those other Dark Knights. Ranged, single target, enmity increasing attack? Cringe. Why would I use unmend to aggro one enemy when I can aggro all the enemies with unleash? AoE spam baby! I like the dark side meter, boosting my damage when I use flood or edge of darkness. And yes, I remember to use my tank stance, unlike a certain someone. Overall though, I'll probably be playing a lot more of this class in the future. But that doesn't mean I won't be touching black mage anymore. If anything, I did most of Heaven's Ward as a black mage. Probably because it was already level 60 when I started. Again, really getting a lot of mileage out of this free trial. Which segues us into... There's definitely going to be spoilers for this one, not only because it's hard to talk about Heaven's Ward without spoiling some things, 
but also because I just really want to talk about everything. Heaven's Ward's story is probably one of the best stories I've ever had the pleasure to experience. It's not perfect, I will say that, but I'll be damned if it isn't close. Maybe though we should touch on one of those little things I don't like first. I was sorely disappointed with how they handled the Uldah situation. In case you forgot or just don't care about spoilers, at the end of A Realm Reborn, the Crystal Braves turn on you, Sultana Nanamo is poisoned and presumed dead, Taleji tries to take over or blames the Scions for her death, at least Raubon was alright. Hey! So the entire setup for as to why you ran away to Ishgard in the first place was just ugh, perfect. Really heavy stakes for you to come back to when the main plot needs a short break, right? Not the case, exactly. The first time you're called on to deal with the old Da problem was awesome. You have to break Raubon out of Halatali, you fight Ilbird. It's great. Fantastic mission. Loved every second of it. And then there were rumors that the Sultana might be alive. Okay, interesting. I can see this as a way of bringing her back into the story so as to keep Uldah's consistency in place on a meta level. And then you return the second time to deal with it and everything is rushed to a conclusion. Like, based on the Heaven's Ward trailer and the mood leading up to it, I thought we were going to get some awesome invasion of the royal palace and dethrone Lolorito ourselves in some epic comeback fight and release the Sultana from some cell so she can rule once more. No, nope, none of that. Instead, we get a weak ass. Oh, actually, I swapped out the death poison for a sleep poison to save the Sultana. Answer. Whoopee. And then that's it. The whole being framed for murder shit, the splitting of the Scions, it felt like it meant nothing. I can understand if the ending for A Realm Reborn got in the way of the main plot for Heaven's Ward, and that they wanted to give that more room to breathe and flesh it out, but they just kind of left this plotline out to dry and never did anything interesting with it, so I was a bit disappointed in that regard. But again, I should point out, that was essentially a side story that we only visit, what, twice? It's the main campaign that we're interested in here, and god damn was it good! Basic summary is as follows. Ishgard, a nation of Elizin, has been at war with the Dragons of Dravania for a thousand years, and it's up to you and your party to uncover the truth behind the war's origins and bring this millennia of bloodshed to a close. There were two main things that made Heaven's Ward such a compelling and enthralling adventure. The characters and the consistent reveal of logical and rewarding twists. In other, more overused terminology, the proper subversion of expectations. First, the characters. I really grew to like the Scions over the course of ARR, but I love the cast of Heaven's Ward. If you tuned into any of my live streams, any time Amaric appeared on screen, I would always bring up how cool he was over and over and over again. And I'm about to do it again. Amaric is just such a respectable and honorable dude, you know? He always did the right thing. He was willing to give other perspectives a chance, even if they went against the very faith that he fought for. And his voice actor gave an excellent performance, a very memorable voice. Like, there's just no reason to dislike Amaric that I can think of. Hell, one of the best cutscenes comes after the Dragon Song War, where the two of you just get to have a dinner and chat for once. At least, to me, that was one of the best. Isale is also very close to being my favorite character. I really loved her arc, and she had a lot of great moments throughout the game. That and the fact that she's connected with the best primal thus far, Shiva, with footsteps in the snow, and... Ah! But we can't leave out our boy Astinian, perfect, edgy role model that all the floor tanks can aspire for. And speaking of those two, the main party dynamic with the clashing ideals between Astinian and Isale and how their beliefs shifted over the course of the story was great. And then there's the Fortom family and our good boy Horshafant. Ah, uh, Horshafant. Let's move along, shall we? We were not too late, my friends. You're always so happy, Horshafant. Somehow, Heaven's Ward keeps coming up with these incredible plot twists that fit perfectly within or naturally expands upon the pre-established lore of the game. It gets to the point that you begin to question what even dictates something being a primal, in a good way, mind you, because of how wacky things get. And then there's all the secrets surrounding the origins of the Dragon Song War, and how many different lies and secrets you uncover. It's just endless reveals, and it keeps you enticed in what's going on. The ending to Heaven's Ward base game is 
acceptable, but it wasn't as satisfying as I had anticipated. The final fight was really cool, and the fact that the whole thing was some reference to another Final Fantasy that I haven't played was neat, but it just didn't feel like it was quite enough. Granted, that's because the Dragon Song plot isn't actually over at that point. That ending comes in patch 3.3, and that fight is how you finish a story. I know that I can often be the victim to hyperbole, but the final steps of faith is not only one of the greatest final boss fights I've ever encountered, it is just one of the most perfect finales I've ever beheld. The tone, the cutscenes leading up to the fight, the location being the broken steps of faith, the fact that Dragon Song plays as Horace Velger grants you his power to slay Nidhogg, and how it continues playing in the zone after the cutscene, and then it still continues to play into the entire first phase of Nidhogg's trial. Just absolutely astounding and then the second and final phase themes being a reprise of the heavens ward main theme it's just yes everything about this finale was a big yes for me and everything about the dragon song war story is a yes i remember seeing a comment somewhere about how the best final fantasy story in 15 years was an expansion and you know what i can't disagree heavens ward is just that good I guess I can go over the other two patches real quick for 3.4 and 3.5. Soul Surrender was alright. The beginning was good, and the ending was really freaking good because it had another one of the best fights I've had in this game yet, but everything else sucked. All the stuff that filled the middle of Soul Surrender was the kind of content that I loathe the most. Just very blatant time-wasting filler. Oh, go fight fucking Titan on hard. Again, whoopee. Granted, the story expanded on the main overarching plot of 14, and again, that final combat with the Warriors of Darkness was absolutely awesome. I'll just say that the Warriors of Darkness plot line in general was super good, but overall, average patch. The Far Side of Fate was also just okay. This last patch was obviously set up for Stormblood, which I've already been informed is the weakest expansion so far in regards to story, so... Mm, it was kind of obvious who the Griffin was, but it was good to see him return, so I could kick his ass. The ending got really dark, with all the people dying to fuel Shinryu's creation, but I'm gonna be honest for a moment, the reveal that Ida was actually her younger sister lies, I didn't really care. It's not like we met the real Ida and bonded with her or whatever, at least 2.0 players didn't as far as I'm aware, so there's no real reason for me to care about this revelation. It was just like, oh, you're not who you said you were? Okay. But those two patches aside, I'll repeat once more for good measure, the Dragon Song War is one of the best stories I've ever gotten to experience and is fully deserving of the title award winning. I've spent enough time on this part as is, so let's move on to something else. Before we get into the actual content of Heaven's Ward, I just want to briefly touch on the new locations you get to visit. Heaven's Ward introduces a bunch of new areas in the Karthus region to experience, but let's start with my favorite of them all, Ishgard. If Heaven's Word is just anime Skyrim but done better, Ishgard is Windhelm to me. Or maybe Markarth? Either way, the main city hub for the expansion is one of my new favorite places to be in. First, its theme is just incredible and triumphant, incorporating the Heaven's Word theme again, and perfectly so. I won't touch on it too much more, saving that for the music portion. I really love the gothic stone aesthetic to the whole city, it looks fantastic. The residents even got the same zealous approach to outsiders as Wind. Oh wait, Gridania may be my home, but I'd be lying if I said Ishgard wasn't a close second. Then you got the other zones, the Karthus Western Highlands where snow reigns supreme as the land is eternally tormented by blizzards, the Dravanian Forelands, a foresty mountain region with some cool ruins, smelly bug people, and a massive mountain filled with dragons. You've got the Sea of Clouds, a series of floating islands in the sky where fat bird people try not to have their homes eaten by an even fatter flying whale. The Dravanian Hinterlands, also known as Gobbyland, also formerly known as Charlian. Home to the Gobbies, the Mobbies, the Big Bad Robotties. I can't see this yeah. Alexander. 
Alexander place. Um, Wait, this is it. You're flying at him! Look at the giant mech! Look at the giant orb! Look at the mech! Look at the giant orb! Alright, take us down. Straight down. And a wonderful old witch named Matoya. God, her cave theme is so nice. And she's such a fun character. Gotta love her. There's the Churning Mists, another land floating in the sky with even more dragons. Bigger dragons, badder dragons, and also Moogles. How do they even get up here? And there's one more zone that I think I'll save for you to experience yourself. It's pretty cool though. Overall, the environments are pretty neat. Love Ishgard and just chilling to its theme. Good zones, fun to explore. All right, finally, time to talk about the content. Like everything else Heaven's Ward has had to offer so far, the content has been just as amazing. Let's start with the trials. Ravana was probably the most forgettable for me, but then again, he was the first one, and it was still all right. Bismarck stuck with me for its extremely cool setting, really unique and chill boss theme, and the fact that you actually have to climb on his back to do damage. Also, he's got the crew. As I stated earlier, the trial at the end of Base Heaven's Ward was cool, but I'm glad it wasn't the end-all be-all of Dragon Song. Still, despite not having played the game with the summon this fight is referencing, I still think the trial is super cool with some absolutely stunning visuals, if not a little too easy. And then, there's Nidhogg. Shiva used to be my favorite trial, now Nidhogg is my best friend. I have already said it earlier, but the final steps of Faith has to be one of the greatest boss fights I've ever done. The music is on point, the mechanics are cool, and the fight is actually kinda challenging for a main story boss. And by extension, the Minstrel's Ballad version, Nidhogg's Rage, is an even better fight. Though, until I realized that third class citizens could join party finders but not make them, I was stuck queuing in duty finder for that. It took forever to get people. But hey, at least challenges form bonds. Like this little friendly campfire circle. Or this new friend I made as we kept bumping into each other while farming trial mounts. Oh yeah, that. So instead of touching crafting again, because screw that, I found a new grind to torment myself with. Mount grinding. With ARR, I thankfully had my friends in Orbs help me out, but this time I was on my own. I didn't get them all, and sadly I'll have to return someday to finish the grind. There were also the three Warring Triad fights. Yes, all of them based on the same Warring Triad from Final Fantasy VI. Finally, a reference I could appreciate. Uh, Zervan was fine, I guess. Honestly, pretty easy all around. Don't know why he was the last of the three. Uh, Sophia was pretty cool with the tilting platform you had to avoid falling off of, but did you really have to make me run the fight almost 50 times before giving me the mount? And then you got Sephiroth. This trial was really fun. Banging music, cool and easy to understand mechanics, although I missed the sweep check. Whoops. And just fun in general. I had a lot of fun with that one. Trials weren't the only kind of content to get a boost. Dungeons had their own fair share of wonder. There wasn't any particularly bad dungeons, just bad players. Great Gubal Library is cool, but I just wish Final Fantasy players could count to three! The set pieces for the dungeons this time around were much grander and interesting, like the entire upside down nature of the anti-tower, or the combative push through the heavens that was Sor Kai. Man, that whole dungeon was neat, and I loved having Horace Velger as the final boss. The vault was a real treat, rich in atmosphere as you storm the Church of Ishgard, while also having some really good boss fights and shocking plot reveals. And let's not forget the Ethero-Chemical Research Facility, another Allegan-style dungeon with lots of wicked sci-fi tech and yet another super badass redux of the Heaven's Ward theme that plays throughout the dungeon. And then the final boss playing the Maker's Ruin. Oh, it's just pure bliss. God, I love these dungeons. They're so much better than Sestasha and Thousand Maws. Ugh. Now, as for the raids, once again we have a set of regular raids and a set of alliance raids. One of these was really good, the other, not so much. We'll start with the lesser of the two. The alliance raids for Heaven's Ward just weren't really that good. The plotline is alright, I suppose. Void Arc was just kind of like World of Darkness 2.0 for me. It looked the same, the mechanics had the same kind of difficulty. That's about it. 
Uh, I never want to do the Weeping City again. I know that for sure. This raid, it did things to me. For the first little while, I was wondering why it was nicknamed the Wiping City. And then we got to Forgal and everything made sense. These fights were insane. Ozma made me feel like I was going to have an aneurysm from just from looking at it. Just in general, I found the mechanics to be quite vague for a match made activity. So it definitely took a toll. Dunscathe was pretty cool as the final of the three. The environment was really neat. And there was even a proto Ultima fight that was super fun, but it didn't really excuse the previous two. And then on the flip side, we have the Alexander raids. Now these were a real treat. This is the kind of raiding experience I was looking for. The Sen Bros spending a whole evening together on a live stream, having a grand old trek through this massive mechanical primal. While I still enjoyed doing them, the Bahamut raids were lacking in a way for me because I had to be carried through them since no one else was running them. But with Alexander, the four of us were able to queue into Duty Finder and just find four other people for each turn, which meant the fights were level synced and therefore I actually had to do them right. And was it ever fun? God, I missed raiding, like really raiding with friends. The challenge of doing the fights, figuring out how to do the mechanics of each fight. It's the kind of experience you can only get from raiding. Albeit the raids weren't super difficult or anything, but they were still a hell of a lot of fun to do at the right level. The location designs were really cool with its epic steampunk style and neat methods of navigating the arenas like Tony Hawking down the rails. The music yet again was bopping and also was a really cool change of pace. Instead of some grandiose epic orchestral pieces, we got electronic rock rave music and let me tell you, it's pretty damn good. My head was banging along for probably the entire night as we did all 12 turns. And then you've got Brute Justice's jazzy theme? I, I don't know, I'm not a music man. It's good, that's all I can say. And I'd be remiss if I failed to praise forward and back and then forward and back and then go forward and back and then put one foot forward. And then the final boss fight was just, ah, it was so cool. Fighting a time traveling robot with angel wings inside of itself. Yes, please. We also met some interesting characters along the way. And I don't just mean the really good story that these raids told. We happened to bump into a long lost Sen family member in one raid. That was pretty funny. My favorite turns were A7, A8, A11, and A12. And I hope to return to do them again soon. Maybe at a harder difficulty? We'll just have to see. There's one more wider encompassing topic I wanted to discuss, and that was the presentation. Now, I've kind of touched on these points already here and there, talking about cool locations and great music, but I really want to get these ideas across, particularly the second one. All the designs and locales in Heaven's Ward are superb. There's a minor yet noticeable step up in the creativity of the different zones, like that last environment that I didn't talk about earlier, or the sea of clouds and how vast and winding the paths are through the clouds for you to explore. And now, the music. I said that certain tracks here and there have been really good, but to be honest, the entire soundtrack for the expansion is remarkable. Like, I never thought an expansion for a video game could have so much good stuff, let alone a score this good. Every single song works. And then there's the incredible leitmotif that permeates a good chunk of the songs. The Heaven's Ward main theme is awesome and heroic and triumphant. And so when it appears in so many different forms over the story, especially in Free Fall and Revenge of the Horde, which are the second and third songs in the final steps of faith, you can really feel the excitement swelling up inside you. And then there's Dragon Song, the slow, peaceful vocal piece for Heaven's Ward that acts as a reminder of the peace there once was and the peace you're working towards for Ishgard and Dravania. Matoya's cave theme is beautifully relaxing, and again, the entire Alexander raid goes in the opposite direction, shifting away from more orchestral genius and experimenting with what a boss theme can be. 
messing around with electronic and rock to create a completely different and yet equally satisfying experience. Please, just give the soundtrack a listen. It really is up there amongst my favorite OSTs now. Let's see, what else did I do in Heaven's Ward? Oh, I tried out the Golden Saucer for the first time. It's an in-game casino where you can do various games and gambles to get a special currency that you can use to get special rewards, all themed around cactuars, it seems? I don't know, I just did the mini and jumbo cactpots. Won the mini one twice, which was pretty nice. I also attempted to do PvP, like I said I would in the last review, but sadly, my third-class citizen rights don't include that. I also tried to crash a wedding once, but Again, the free trial kept me from doing so. That's okay. With Heaven's Ward over, I'm gonna have to pay up now to play Stormblood. So, full rights for me. Woo! I did get to do some events, though. There was one on a beach, and it was absolutely cracked. So many people there. I got a big polar bear mount as a prize, which people were stacking into a tower. Oh, and Yoshi P himself thanked me for playing, so that was nice. Overall, I loved Heaven's Ward. I mean, if this is coming as a surprise to you now, I... I don't know what else to tell you. Where have you been for the last 20 or so minutes? Anyhow, Heaven's Ward was everything I expected it to be, and then some. It is absolutely deserving of the title award-winning, critically acclaimed, up to level 60, whatever meme you want to associate with it. It is truly that good. It has to be one of the best stories I've ever encountered, a fantastic cast of characters, great content to play through, and music to immerse you in the world, whether to calm or to rouse for battle. I already wish that I could go back in time and experience the whole thing all over again. I really, really enjoyed my time at Heaven's Ward, and I highly recommend it. Even though I hear that Stormblood is the weakest expansion thus far, and this is still before Endwalker came out, I'm looking forward to continuing my Final Fantasy XIV journey. But the training wheels are now off. The free trial is complete. And it was worth every one of those 250 hours. <laughs>